Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. I actually just got done hauling the 140 for Mike this morning. No video on that, but I am gonna be hopping in the CD500, which I'm pretty sure I hear behind me. We're gonna go get the skid steer, take that up to Mike's shop, and I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the trailer and the CD500. We'll see if I can work on my fabrication skills, my best man behind the scenes impression. I should get out of the middle of the parking lot. This is not a good place to stand. And I can't show you what's on that trailer either. I can't show you yet. Soon enough I can. Oh gosh, oh, oh but it looks good. Are you excited about it? Overly excited. Overly excited. gonna use this I've got to get the skid steer forks on that trailer I'd use that case loader that's over there but it's not running right that's why it's sitting down here I've got to uh, haul that to the dealer later this week as you can see are on tires on you guys saw that we're gonna be uh, replacing the trailer tire real quick go run up to the house get the skid steer and we'll take that to my shop we'll get to work did give her a little bit of a bath while she was up here we're doing some work at the house hi pop all right sweetie we're doing some work at the house not pond related just Skid steer happen to be available related. Why? Yeah, that one came apart on us the other day going down the road. Not too entirely sure why, but. So this is your friendly reminder that GoPro 8 MIDI mods do not like vibration and just the simple vibration of setting it on the floor jack for that one little shot was enough to cause that microphone to disconnect but still show that it was connected. So 
couple of these clips don't have audio. We're just gonna voice it over and that's gonna be fine. The only thing I really wanted to tell you is that this is a different style rim and we'll point this out later. We'll kind of go through the tightening process and why this is different from a hub piloted or just a regular studded wheel. But this is called a Dayton wheel and there's these little wedges that have to come off. Basically, you take the lug nut off or whatever you wanna call it and I just take a slide hammer and put it between the wedge and the hub and just gentle taps. You're not going all out on the slide hammer. You don't want to mess anything up on that stud, but just gentle taps between that wedge and the hub. And typically those wedges pop right out for you. It's not that big of a deal. Normally the hardest part's just kind of trying to get the angle on there with the slide hammer. And then once you get the tire off itself, you'll see here in a second, there's also a hub spacer that's got to come out. And we're doing the inner tire. You guys saw that. There you go. Tire's off. And this little hub spacer's got to come out of there, which is typically a bear. It's normally kind of seized on there if the wheels have been on there for a while. And you can bend the lips on that. So you do have to be kind of careful with it. Matt stopped by for a little bit to give me a hand. He was out changing a tractor tire on one of Mike's buddy's tractors. We were both doing tires that day. Anyway, we'll get this thing off there. The audio clips will pick right back up. We'll get the tire changed out. And later in the video, we're going to build Dirt Perfect, the perfect birthday present. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out, and I think you guys will like it too. Dog's coming to help. All right, let's get this tire off and changed. And just to save us all the time, I'm just going to time lapse getting that off. Where is it? There it is. And that on. That actually went way better than I expected, to be honest with you. And uh, it's pretty tight on there, so I don't think we'll have any problem getting that bead set. Getting the bead blaster filled up. We'll do some soapy water. Lots of it, you know, just lots of it. You guys, right here, that's not bad. You can see pretty decent there. And where's the tire chuck? There it is. Oh, wait a second. All right. When you guys woke up this morning, did you know the day was going to be so good that we were going to hit the bead in the first hit? Did you know that? I didn't know it was going to be that good of a day. Oops. You just got to make sure the valve stem is between these and you're good. Who's talking about here? So the GoPro 8 Media Mod cut out on us again, but that's okay. We can just voice this part over. Basically, I'm just explaining this is a different style wheel than what is on his other trucks and trailers. This is kind of an older style. It's called a Dayton style, just kind of like Dayton, Ohio, I guess. They're also known as spoked wheels. They have these little wedge pieces like this that bolt onto or tighten down onto the studs and that wedge wedges between the hub and the wheel. And you have to get those so that it's perfectly centered. Now the difference on a, a typical hub piloted or a stud wheel is when you put those on, they center themselves pretty much. But on this, you can see that hole is oblong and that's on purpose. It's not a perfect circle. That's so you can adjust it up and down to get it perfectly centered on that hub. That's one of the reasons they're not very popular. If you don't get it absolutely perfect, she'll get a little wonky on you going down the road. And I'll show you what I mean here. You see I've got the speed square. Pick any of those lines on there. All those lines are the consistent. They're consistent all the way around. Now, as I spin the tire, you're going to see how those lines travel up and down the speed square. That's showing you 
that that wheel is not perfectly centered on that hub. Like I said, they're just hand tight right now. I haven't gone through and started tightening them and pulling it the way it needs to go. And you saw how much it dropped there. But see how it changes as it spins around? So basically, I will spin the tire to where it is at its lowest point on the speed square, and I'll put two studs directly above that, and then I'll slowly tighten those in and just work my way around tightening them in until it's perfectly centered. There's perfectly centers we can get with the redneck speed square option on a Dayton style wheel. You can see the difference as I spin it around. And that's what I'm telling you there. I'm going to start there, tighten those up, pull it up just a little bit, split the difference, and work my way around. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, some air quotes. wonder what I was saying there. Just pick one of these three lines, but i got everything snugged up the way I want it. It looks pretty daggone close. Whoa! Slapping the speed square on me. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks really good. I love it. Absolutely love it. changed just a little bit I'll explain here in just a second but we're going to pick up the John Deere 120 from Herb Equipment in Evansville real quick and then we're gonna do something pretty fun I'm pretty excited about it oh a few holes that's okay that's okay good morning how are you? Looking like you're doing pretty good. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Started, so that's good. We'll get here. I mean, that's pretty close to me. that is but listen if there's like a koozie in here we all saw that that said cleveland right oh yeah oh yeah hat for miss jenna a hat for dirt perfect and uh well i saw a couple extra koozies for captain cleveland if i was looking right pro tip carry packaging tape with you when you go places that way you know they never know
I will say the short broom is handy for this section. But I already told you guys, in case you missed it, Mike did buy me a fancy new broom there. It's been working pretty well. Got everything chained down, four corners, the boom. Flags on the back, flags on the front. I do want to look at something real quick. Somebody made a comment the other day, and I questioned that comment. And I, uh oh. Wait a second. I put a tape measure in here, I thought. I thought it, yeah, there it is. Somebody said that in Illinois you don't have to flag unless you're 10 foot wide because he was questioning why we flagged the 120. And I thought that it was anything that was 8 foot 6 or more. So I reached out to Officer Hoover and I checked with him and he said they actually just finished training on some of that stuff and he said yeah 8 foot 6 or more is when you're supposed to flag. That's when you're technically oversized, that's when you're supposed to flag 8 foot 6. I don't know if there's a special exemption for maybe farm, maybe that guy was a farmer and Maybe farmers don't have to flag till 10 foot. I don't know, but let's see here. You guys see it? Oh, eight foot six. Rub rail to rub rail, we are eight foot six. Almost like they planned it that way. You know what I mean? And the tracks on the 120, outside to outside, are nine foot. Oh, let's just call her nine foot 10. So basically, since Mike's trailer is eight foot six outside to outside, anytime we have anything that sticks over the edge, like so it's over with and it has to be flagged now there is an exception there's an exemption for chains on the outside i can't remember if it's three inches total between both sides or three inches per side i bet it's three inches total for both sides so chains sticking over and binders don't count how this binder sticking over to the best of my knowledge that doesn't count but if the piece of equipment is obviously that counts so I can't remember who it was that made that comment, but if it was you that made the comment, you might want to double check that. I just don't want you, I don't want you to be told wrong by somebody and then end up, uh, end up getting in trouble because that didn't turn out to be correct. Anyway, we've got birthday gifts to make, so let's get this thing back home. check my chains real quick before we hop on everything looks really good still by the way if you're a road engineer if you could make on ramps with enough room so we could actually get off the dang road that would be pretty cool i would really like that i would really like that So we got the 120 back to the lot, which is awesome. Pretty excited about that. And everything seems to be working really well. And just stay tuned to Mike's channel. I could try to explain what was wrong with it, but I don't know. I'm not that mechanically inclined. I'm not gonna be able to explain it right. I'll say something wrong. Just stay tuned to his channel. He'll explain everything, including the relationship with that dealer. You guys made the comment. Yep, that is the dealer he's had issues with in the past, but they are trying to work past that and move forward and kind of rebuild that relationship. You'll hear more about it and more accurately about it on his channel. So stay tuned for that. We did not get as much done on C8500 and trailer as we had hoped. We just, we had a lot of rain days this week, actually, which was kind of a bummer. But 
you know, hopefully next week we'll get the rest of it done. We did get the wheels painted, and they looked pretty good. Um, we didn't do anything fancy, just knocked off the loose stuff, cleaned it all up with some uh, with some solvent, and got them wiped down and rattle canned them, but they looked pretty good. We're pretty happy with them. But today is Mike's birthday, his 40th birthday, so get over and wish him a happy birthday for one. Today is Sunday. The day we're shooting the video is Mike's birthday. I had to lie to him this morning. I ran into him. He said, what are you doing tonight? And I said, oh, I'm busy, bud. I got plans. Um, we're going to celebrate his birthday tonight. He just doesn't know it yet. I'm going to build him a gift, and I'm pretty excited about it. If this works out the way I think it will, it'll be like top 10 coolest things I've ever built. We've got an old axe handle here. Yeah, we've got a glove. we got some angle iron, some bolts. A $200 2x4, because that's what they go for right now. Of course, batteries are charging. What are you guys doing? Cora's got a moth. Lily's sleeping. That's not sleeping, that's sweeping. <laughs> Words are hard. Let's get to work. Okay, so we kind of have to mock it up on this post here, but here's the first two pieces. Here's the next step. We threw a couple boards on. I had to offset it to slide it over because the screws are going through. We'll cut those off. That's fine. This is a very low budget operation. We're not trying to make anything fancy here. What do you got? Let me see. I think just a little shorter. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And you drill a hole in this thing too. Here's where we're at now. We got the axe handle bolted on. Looking pretty good. Had to cut a little channel out because my bolts weren't long enough. That's fancy. Looking good. We well, almost got it. We have like two more steps. I think it's gonna work though. I think it's gonna work great. Oh yeah. So far, it's working perfect. Just a few other little touches. Snuck some bolts up, and I'll give you guys the demonstration. Okay, so here's the final touches. We got the glove on, we've got the axe handle, right? We'll just have to screw this to his wall somewhere in the shop. You guys get the idea? Where'd my camera? Camera woman go. You ready? Hmm? You ready? You guys ready? Huh? Yeah, so he we... can pat himself on the back. Every shop needs one of these. This is my best work yet. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you. You have to even pat on your head. I Watch your head. fingers. I could put it on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. That should be a lot of fun. It should get some good laughs. That's what it's all about. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit random, as always, I guess I suppose it always is. But, you know, we got a little bit of trucking done. We got the 120 back. Everything's running, working great. Cannot wait to get that thing back in the dirt. We got this fun little thing made for dirt perfect. And as far as the channel, there are some big things coming up, things you guys don't even know about. We haven't even talked about them yet. We haven't even mentioned them yet. We've kind of been keeping it a secret, making sure it's all going to work out. But it happened, and we're excited about it. And we'll share it with you real soon in the future. YouTube yacht work coming up. They're perfect work coming up. Pond repairs coming up. A lot of big projects going on. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying the channel. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.